Components are reusable blocks of widgets that you can create to help you build fast and maintain your apps better. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create them, talk about the principles you wanna use when designing them, and show you some common practical examples. Now, components are the last step in setting up your design system after you've set up your theme widgets. Now, you may be wondering, well, what's the difference between a theme widget and a component? Because both of them are reusable things that you're gonna use throughout your app, and that's true. But theme widgets, those are those things you see right here are reusable styles just on one single widget. So they're styles available on these primitive widgets. So when would you use components? Well, you use them when the thing you're designing becomes more complex. And that can happen in two ways. Either it's more complex because there are multiple widgets in the component or because something changes in the component. So you would need parameters or component state. And I'll show you all of this. So let's first look at how to set up components. Now, the first thing to know is that this icon, this diamond icon, is the universal symbol in Flutterflow for components. So if you see that, you know you have something to do with components. So right down here, I already have this component built. And so that's why I see the diamond. Here, these are filtering this view right here. So if I click on this, I can see just my components. Or here, I see pages and components. But what if I wanna make a component? Well, there are a couple of ways to do that. So let's add in a row and an image and maybe some text here. And this could be something like a user chip. So let's just make this a little smaller and bump this off from the side. So maybe I want this row right here to be a component. Well, there are three ways to do that. First, I could just right click or two finger click on the highest parent where I want it and go convert to component. I can do the same thing in the widget tree right here or I can come over to here in the properties panel and create it with this button. Now, when I do that, I wanna give it a name. So let's call this user chip and it brings me into the component editing view. So this is the same as just the normal Flutterflow view, except for I'm only editing this component. And it works in the same way, where if you click on different elements, you'll see the properties. If you click off, you'll see the component state variables available to you, as well as parameters that we'll look at in a second. Now you're often gonna be switching between editing your component and working on the page on which the component is set. And to get back there, of course, you can go click to the page, but you'll always have this back to home page that you can just click on and it'll bring you back. Okay, so we've got a component set up here, but there's one other way to create a component and that's coming up here and entering into the create component dialog. And we've got a bunch of template components you can use. You can generate one with our AI gen component feature or create a blank one and it works the same way we're brought into a blank component editing view. Okay, so let's go back to our page and you can see we've got our component we've created here. And this is the way it looks in the widget tree with this purple and our familiar diamond. Now, if you wanna edit it, you can select it and go into this edit button and it'll bring you in or the way I like to do it is just double click into the component. Okay, so that's creating and editing components, but how do you add them? Well, anywhere where you have this add widget icon button, you can add your components. And of course, it's gonna be in your diamond option. So here we can see our options. So let's just add this component right there. So now we've got our two in here. And of course, this is available to you anywhere where you can add widgets. So here and also here. All right, next, Let's talk about how to design components. And there's two steps. First, design, and second, parameters and state. Okay, let's go into a new component. Let's start it from scratch here, and we're gonna call this button. Great, now we're gonna be setting up a component from a design I have, so let me show you that. So here's my Figma design, and the component I wanna design are these buttons right here. So I've got a sign up, a login, and this forget password. Okay, so the first step is to just design it. So I'm just gonna grab the design specs here. It's 50 by 124, and I've got my color here. Great, let's go build this. So let's come in here and grab a button. I know that it is 50 by 124, and the border radius is 30. Okay, beautiful. Now one design principle to keep in mind 
is that this component will be embedded within other widgets. So you wanna avoid using infinite height or width. Now, Flutterflow has implemented some helper utilities to help you deal with this, but let me show you. So let's say we had our button here, and instead of our height of 50 pixels, we had infinite height. Now let's go onto a page here, and I've got a column, and columns are looking for their height from their children. But if you have a child that wants infinite height, you're gonna get the unbounded height error. It's gonna crash. So if we add in that button here, it doesn't crash. And that's because we've added expanded to the widget. Now, if I turn this off, it will crash. So just keep this in mind when you're designing. But one quick tip that you can use is the following. So let's get rid of this and come back into our button and make it 50 pixels again. If I wanted to have this button stretch to fill the available space, I can give my button a width of infinity, but then wrap it in a container. Let's get rid of the default background color and these default dimensions and give it a max width of 100% of the screen. This way, you'll never get that unbounded height or unbounded width error because it can never be larger than the screen. So this would be one option, or you can just accept the helper that Flutterflow provides, giving it expanded. Okay, but we've got hard-coded values in here, so let's just use these. Beautiful. So our first step is done. We've designed our button. The next step is parameters and state. Okay, well, how do I know if I need any of these things? Because you don't necessarily need parameters or state. Well, the one question to ask to figure out if you need any of these is to ask yourself, what changes. So when I put this onto the different pages, what is going to change about this component? And those things that change will need to have a parameter. So let's look back at our design. Okay, so I see three examples here. One, two, three. And what is going to change about these? Well, we've got the background color that's going to change, and we've got the text that's going to change. So we need two parameters, color and text. Okay, let's go do that. Now, parameters on components work the same way as with pages. That is, they're data that's passed into the thing, so the page or the component. So to access parameters, you can either click out here in the canvas area or just select this root widget right here, and you're gonna see them in the top right here. Now there are three steps to setting up parameters. Define the parameter, bind the parameter, and pass the parameter. Define, bind, pass. Okay, first let's define it. Okay, so I'm gonna add in a parameter. The first one is going to be button text, and that's gonna be a string. Great, and then we are going to need a color. Great. Okay, we've defined it. Next, we need to bind it. That is, these parameters exist on this component, but they're not bound to anything in the component itself. They're just kind of sitting there off by themselves. So we need to actually bind them. So let's come into our button here and let's bind our text first. So here's our text. Let's come in here and bind it under component parameters. Beautiful. Next, our color. So let's scroll down. Here's our fill color and let's just bind it to the color. Beautiful, that's it. So we've defined, we've bound it, now we need to pass it. And to do that, we need to go into the page where this is going to be used. So I've got a page here set up already, and we're gonna need a row in here, so let's just add a row, and then let's add our component. Beautiful. Let's give this row a little padding love here. And let's push this off to the right for that first design. Okay, so let's pass these values. So let's select our button. And when you scroll down, you can see the component properties right here. And let's skip over these for a second and look at these down here. These are our two parameters that we set up. And so whatever parameters you have on your components, they will show up here. This is a dynamic list. Okay, so this page is the login page. So the text I want here is login and the color is that purple color. Beautiful. Now, of course, on the sign up page, we would just have this say sign up, and that's the same color. For that forget password one, we would just say forgot password, and we would make that color transparent. Beautiful. But we're actually missing one additional parameter. Do you know what it is? Well, let's ask that question before. What changes between these designs? Well, what changes is the logic. That is, what 
actions do we want to execute when the user clicks on these buttons? Well, presumably there's going to be an API endpoint for logging in, for forgetting password and signing up. So just as the color and text change, so also the logic changes. And we can do that in Flutterflow. Let me show you. So let's go back into our component here. I'm just gonna double click and we're going to define another parameter here. And this is going to be action. And we wanna set it to the type of action. Okay, and just like everything else, we have to define it, then we have to bind it. So where do we bind actions? Well, in the action flow editor. So we select our button, select the action flow editor, add an action. And here, we're not hard coding this action right here. This is going to be dynamic. And to find this dynamic action, just search for callback. And you wanna bind this execute callback. And then we just set this to that parameter action that we defined, beautiful. So we've defined it, we've bound it. Last step is, let's pass it. So let's go back to our homepage. And when we go into our button, we can see that we've now got an additional parameter where we pass an action. So if we open our action flow editor, we're on the forget password instantiation. So we're going to search for API call. And I've got one set up for forgot password. And that's it. And of course, when you put this on a different page, you're going to define a different action. So instead of forgot password, I would do sign up if we're on the sign up page. All right, the last thing I want to talk about is this update page on change. And let's jump to a different project to show you how this works. So in this project, I've got a set of posts and I've got some filters down here. And this filters is a component. And what I want to do is I want the user to be able to click on each one of these and filter these posts. So I've got this list view right here and on the backend query, I've got a filter and I'm looking at the tags, which in the database is food, politics or sports. And I'm saying when that tag equals this choice chip right here and you can see it down here inside the widget state. And notice here as well that you can access widget states of widgets that are inside your components in the outer scope. So I have my choice chips inside this component and I still have access to it. So that's what I'm filtering by. Okay, so it's a pretty simple setup that we're all familiar with where we have some options to filter a list. Now, right now, I don't have update page on change set. So let's see how this works. So I've got my post right here. You can see the tags I have bound here. And when I click them, nothing happens. And this is because although the logic is set up correctly, we haven't told the UI to reevaluate. And that's what the update page on change does. It says when there's a change in the component that will affect the page that the component is on, I want you to reevaluate and redraw what needs to be redrawn. So if we just go back in here and click on update page on change, and refresh it and try it again. Now, when we select one of these, our list filters like we expect. And that's it. That's how to create components in Flutterflow.